Yeah, I can't really film like this, Asher. You, <clears throat> you want to talk to the ladies. I'm trying to talk to the ladies. Yeah, it, they don't really want to see your booty in their face. How about you turn this way and sit down? Hi, ladies. Uh, good morning. Well, I don't know if it'll be morning when you're watching this. Um, I am sitting here in my prayer corner and I have just been um, continuing to read in Galatians. Uh, some of you all joined me in the uh, Living by the Spirit um, series that we did a year ago, two years ago. Um, and there are still things from that series that have just continued to resonate with me. If you have not checked it out, definitely check it out. I'll leave a link to it, um, in the description below this video. Um, but it, for some reason, the fruits of the spirit have just continued to resonate with me, obviously not for some reason, but recently I'll say in the last couple of weeks, um, they've just been repeating in my mind. When I find myself in different situations, I literally feel like I start to check off this list of love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, uh, faithfulness, goodness, right? Um, did I get them all? Patience? Did I say that? I don't know what I said. But anyways, y'all know what the nine fruits of the spirit are. They've just been really repeating in my mind, almost like a mantra. Um, when I start to feel angry, when I start to feel anxious, when I start to feel depressed, when I start to feel stressed, um, when I want to react to something that someone says or does, they've just been popping in my mind. And I'm very grateful for that. Um, and it just reminds me of what we talked about in that series, which is the fact that the fruits of the spirit are what we produce. It's not that we live by the spirit and then those those nine things are the things that we receive. What the Bible says is that when we live by the spirit and walk by the spirit, then we produce those fruits in our lives and they're experienced by the lives of the people that we interact with. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about um, this question that I'd love to pose to you, which is, which of the fruits of the spirit do you find that your words, your actions, your behaviors produce the most often? Um, and that might be different in different seasons of your life. But just right now, in the last few days, what fruits of the spirit do you feel like you have produced through your words, actions and behavior? Um, and it's a good challenging thing to think about. Have my, have the, has the way I've been living my life um, produced peace in other people's lives or peace in certain situations? Has the way I've been living my life produced joy for other people? Has it produced patience in other people? Um, because our behaviors and our words and things like that can help other people to have more patience. It's not always just about us. And I think that's the thing that um, I've really been challenging myself to think about. So I just wanted to share that while it was on my mind. Um, and then also encourage you, if you haven't already uh, watched those videos, to definitely watch the videos in the Living by the Spirit series um, that you can find here inside of the community. Um, I'm, I'm uh, exercising patience right now with somebody who wants to be on camera. But anyways, um, yeah, I just really wanted to share that with you. Um, and I would encourage you to read um, Galatians uh, chapter 5, but start at 16 and then read through chapter 6, verse 5. Because I think sometimes we go straight to Galatians 5.22, where the fruits of the Spirit are listed, and we don't read the context around it. We don't read that, you know, in this um, passage of Scripture, it's talking about the desires of our flesh and how the things that we shouldn't be involved in and the things that um, if we are led by the spirit and walking by the spirit, we won't participate in. And then it talks about um, inheriting the kingdom of God when you do live by the spirit. 
um, and that uh, those who belong to Christ have been crucified with flesh, with its, sorry, let me read this correctly. This is Galatians 5 and 24. And it says, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Whew, that is really convicting to me because in order to live by the spirit and produce things like patience, right? Our flesh has to be crucified like Christ. It has to be crucified. Those desires and passions. Sometimes we think of desires and passions as um, like the, the um, good things, if that makes sense. But our desire and passion can be to retaliate when someone is mean to us, right? Or to lash out in anger. And those are passions and desires of the heart that our flesh controls and that we have to crucify so that instead of doing those things, we respond in a way that is aligned with the spirit and produce love and kindness and faithfulness and, you know, long suffering or patience. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to encourage you guys in that. And uh, I think I might actually rewatch that series myself just because the spirit's continually been putting those fruits of the spirit on my heart. So just wanted to share that. I'm going to hop off now and uh, get my work day started. But um, I pray that whenever you're watching this, if it's the day I posted or three years in the future, I pray that you are encouraged and that you continue to develop the ability to live by the Spirit and hear the Spirit of God whispering through you throughout your day and leading you in your words, actions, and behaviors in your life. All right, y'all. Talk to you later.